Welcome to the build of the Wildman Mach 2. This is an affordable, high-performance kit capable of speeds over Mach 2 and altitudes upwards of 20,000 feet. Now, this rocket has a few building nuances that may differ from your past experience with building fiberglass that we'll get to in a bit. But first, we start where we always start with fiberglass, and that's sanding every portion of the rocket with between 150 and 200 grit sandpaper to provide the best possible adhesion. The Mach 2 comes with Proline 4500 epoxy, which is an ultra high temp and ultra high performance epoxy that provides the bonding strength that allows you to build this rocket without any tip to tip composites and fly it up to Mach 2. It uses a ratio of 100 parts of the black resin to 16 parts of the goldish hardener. You'll want a good digital scale to mix this epoxy accurately because if you get that ratio a little bit too off, it's not going to cure properly. You'll also want to wear gloves if you've never used this stuff before. Make no mistake, I'm not joking when I say do not give this epoxy on anything you love and cherish because it will never ever come out. If this is your first time using Proline 4500, it may be a good idea to order a little bit extra from Wildman when you're ordering this kit so you have a little bit of wiggle room. The amount provided with the kit is enough to do it if you're careful. So just take your time, use very small batches for bonding the fins, and try not to waste any of it. As you can see, I made a batches using one and a half grams of resin for bonding each fin, but you could certainly do it with one gram. Thoroughly wrap a layer of masking tape around the bottom half inch of the tube on the fin side. This is going to provide you a fin stop to ensure that all four fins are mounted in exactly the same distance from the base of the tube. Once all your parts are sanded and ready for bonding, apply a generous bead of the Proline 4500 epoxy to the root of one fin and use the provided fiberglass fin guides to make sure you're getting it on straight. Now, it is possible to do all four fins at once. However, it is highly recommended that you do it one at a time to ensure each fin is properly bonded and properly aligned. After applying the fin, you can try your best to clean up any excess epoxy with denatured alcohol, but like we discussed before, this stuff is not very forgiving. It's easiest just to let it dry as is and do corrective sanding later. A great way to tell that you're getting proper and solid adhesion is to look inside and see if there's a consistent long bead along the root of each fin and make sure you didn't squeeze any epoxy out the sides or leave any dry spots. After your last fin has successfully been bonded to the rocket for 24 hours and allowed the epoxy to completely cure, it's time to move on to fillets. Take your fillet tool of choice, in my case this comically oversized popsicle stick, but a 1.5 inch piece of PVC pipe will also do you perfectly fine. Mark it with your favorite marker or pen and drag it along your fillet point to create a line for you to follow with the tape. Once you have your lines, start following them with your favorite masking tape. And again, this epoxy will get everywhere and on everything. So anything you do not want the epoxy on, make sure it's covered with tape. Now mix up a batch of about 14 grams of resin with the equivalent amount of hardener and start filling in those crevices with this Proline 4500 epoxy. Once you have it evenly spread throughout, with one smooth motion, pull your fillet tool from the tip of the fillet to the back without stopping and ensure you have a nice, even distribution of the epoxy. The great part about Proline 4500 is that it will level itself out very nicely, you just have to give it a good place to start. Once you're satisfied with the epoxy distribution in your fillets, be sure to clean up any overspills on anything other than tape with denatured alcohol on a rag and allow the epoxy to cure with the tape on for about 25 minutes. This will give it time for any dripping that's going to happen to happen on your tape. Once it stops dripping, pull the tape off and look at your nice clean fillet. If you have any bleeding lines from the tape or any rogue bits of epoxy, don't worry. Again, just clean it up with some denatured alcohol. It will leave a black stain, but you can take care of that later. Now just simply repeat the process three more times, allowing the epoxy to fully cure between your sets of fillets and boom, the hard part of building your Wildman Mach 2 is complete. From here on out, it's business as usual with building a high power rocket. So we're going to start with the nose cone and sand everything that needs bonded as usual. Once your sanding is complete, slide your coupler into the nose like you typically would and then slide your piece of switch band airframe over it. Wrap a bit of masking tape around the coupler to hold the switch band in place and this is going to tell you where you need to glue it. Not only that, but it provides an easy way to make a nice clean line. Apply a generous bead of your favorite epoxy to the portion of the coupler the switch band will be glued to and then slide the switch band towards the masking tape so that any runoff epoxy goes on the tape. 
allow the epoxy to tack up a little bit and then pull the tape and you've got a nice clean line. Build your electronics bay to your taste, however, the easiest way to do it is to use the pre-marked spots on the av bay lids provided with the kit, drill the holes out, and build it with quarter 20 all thread. This allows you to easily install the Additive Aerospace 3D printed sled that is also available from the Wildman website. As you can see, I added quarter 20 forged eye bolts at the end of each for retaching recovery gear. I also used high temp thread locker on all of the nuts. While you're here, don't forget to drill vent holes for your altimeter. Of course, we can't forget recovery. The quarter inch Kevlar shock cord sold by Wildman is perfect for this kit as it's lightweight and compact so you can get it into the tiny nose cone very easily. Remember, this is a head end dual deployment kit so your main parachute has to go in there too. Unscrew the nose cone tip and pop out the welded eye bolt and tie your Kevlar shock cord around it. It's always a good idea to double knot and back wrap the tails with tape so that it can't come untied. Once you've done that, just put it back together as it came and you're ready to go. You'll find that many people leave high performance kits like this unpainted to save weight, but feel free to finish it to your liking and once you're complete, go punch a hole in the sky. Thank you for watching the Wildman Mach 2 build instructions. If you haven't yet bought yourself a Mach 2, check out the link in the description and be sure to get yourself some shock cord and additive aerospace sled as well. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and we will get back to you as fast as possible.